Hey, uh, but we're starting a new series called uh, Summer Season. And throughout this series, what we want to do... Oh, my wife is here. Uh, she's back. Sorry, I got, distra- I got distracted. Um, in this series, what we're going to do is that we are going to be uh, talking about spiritual disciplines. Tell your neighbors, spiritual disciplines. And tonight we're going to start with one of them uh, that we're going to study together. But before we get there, I want to encourage you. During the summer, it's so easy to get out of the routine because we don't go to school. We don't have really anything to do. You wake up at whatever time you want to wake up. But listen, don't waste this summer. What what, What you do this summer matters. Athletes they have, in the off season, they have to train to get ready for the new season. It's the same thing in our spiritual walk. If we take a break because it's summer and we stop coming to church and we stop praying and we stop reading the Bible, it will be very difficult to start those spiritual disciplines again. Okay, so now before I go into the message, I want to tell you a story about my mother, me mama. And she's awesome. My mom had me, check this out. See, my mom's crazy. She had me when she was 16 years old. I'm 29. I cannot imagine having a baby. I feel like I'm too young to have a baby. She had me when she was 16 years old. That's crazy. But this is the thing. My mom taught me a lot growing up. And in Puerto Rico, if you don't know, I grew up in Puerto Rico until I was 16 years old. And uh, when uh, the school there, it's totally different. We don't have, like... School buses, like in here, they pick you up in the end of your street and take you to school. We don't have that. So that means that your parents have to take you to school. Now, my mom, I remember we had to wake her up to take us to school. I'm like, you know, normally your parents wake you up. Hey, take me to school. I mean, you need to go to school, get ready. In my house, it was the opposite. We got to wake up my mom. Hey, would you take us to school? So when we were going to school, she always did this. And it was, mm, I didn't like it growing up. I got to be honest. Every morning, I grew up with two siblings. Frances is my sister, my baby's, my younger sister. And then G, that is my brother. Have you guys ever heard of Mateo, my nephew? It's G's son. So anyways, my mom would say in the morning, driving us to school, like waking up, she would say, okay, who's praying today? We always had to pray in the car. And let me tell you, I hated it. I did not want to pray out loud in front of my siblings. And... But that's something that my mom taught me. It was to pray in the morning. And, okay, so she's taking us to school. One of us, firstly, we we had to pray. We'll show up at school. Now, let me tell you something about Puerto Rico schools. People hang out in the front of the school. So in the front gate, everybody is there hanging out, just looking at you when you show up with your mom. Let me tell you, I don't know what kind of household you grew up, but I grew up in a house that... I had to kiss my mom and hug her before I got out out of the car. And I love it. I love that. I love kissing my mom and hugging her. But when I was in middle school and high school, I did not want to kiss my mom in front of anyone. I was too cool for that. Anybody with me? Thank you for your honesty. Thank you, middle schoolers. High schoolers are like, yeah, we're past that. But this is the thing. She will make us kiss her in front of every... I was so embarrassed, guys. But she did this every single day when she dropped us off. She will reach into her purse and she will give us one dollar to go to school. Now you're thinking like, how did you survive going to school with one dollar? Well, I'm 29 years old. Things were a lot cheaper back then. But also, you don't have to pay for your lunch in Puerto Rico. Because a school provides lunch for you. So this $1 was for me to buy whatever I wanted. Most of the mornings, I ate a Twix or a Kit Kat for breakfast. Very nutritionist. That's why I only, uh, um, I'm 5'6". Maybe if I had real eggs and bacon, I would be 6 foot. Maybe. So she will give us $1 to go to school. And she will always say this. Just remember that from that dollar... 10 cents belong to the Lord. And I never forgot that. She always said that every morning, from that dollar, 10 cents belong to the Lord. And I'm like, Mom, why are you telling me that out of 
out of my week, I will go and tithe 50 cents to God. I can't do it. That's nothing. What is God going to do with 50 cents? So anyway, I want to talk about tonight about tithing. I want you to write that on your notes. You can grab your phone. You can grab a paper. You can grab a prayer card. Take notes. So we're talking about money because I think it's very important that we talk about money. Now, let me tell you some things. When you grow up, money is going to be uh, in the front of your mind all the time because you will have bills. Everyone wants to grow up until you have to pay bills. You're like, I don't want to grow up. Listen, take it slow. Live at home as long as you can. Don't. That's a dad who says that. Save as much money as you can. But this is the thing. It's important that as Christians, we understand money and that as Christians, we honor God with our money. So we're going to be talking about tithing and giving. And maybe you're asking today, Pastor Christian, I don't know what you're talking about this because I don't have a job. How many of you guys here have a job? Just a few of you guys. How many of you guys, your parents give you a weekly allowance? Not that many hands, but a few. I like that. Your parents really love you. You better do all the chores they ask you to do. Now, this is the thing. You might be asking, why are we talking about money? Why are you preaching on this since I don't have a job? And this is why. Because if, we do, if you don't learn about money at a young age, when you're old, it's going to be a lot harder. If you don't learn how to honor God with your money at a young age, when you don't have anything, you won't honor God when you have a lot. People always say, you know, I don't give, I don't tithe, because I don't have a lot of money. When I get a job, when I have a paycheck, when I have a lot of money, then I will honor God. And let me tell you something, that is not true. If you don't honor God, when, when you have very little, when you don't have a lot, you won't honor God when you have a lot. Because it's easier to tithe out of $1 than from $100, than from $1,000, because it's not the same amount. So that's why we're talking about giving, and we are going to be looking at the Word of God and see what the Word of God says about money so we can have an underst a biblical understanding on why we need to tithe. So, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, 24, it's not going to be on the screen, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples, he's teaching, and he's saying this, you cannot have two masters. You cannot love God and love money at the same time. Because he's saying, if you have two masters, you will always love one more than the other. And then the one that you don't love as much, you're just going to put into a corner. You're not going to obey. And Jesus said this. He says, you cannot serve God and be a slave to money. Now, I know that maybe you have heard this before, that money is just evil. And people with money are mean. And let me tell you something. This, like money changed people. If you don't know how to handle money. If you don't know how to honor God with your money, it will definitely uh, change you. So let's answer this question. Is money bad or evil? 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 through 10. And remember, I need your help because I'm not going to be able to pronounce his words. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 6. 9 and 10, sorry. But people who long to be rich fall into what? Fall into what? And are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that them into ruin and destruction. But listen to this. For the love of money is the what? The root of all kinds of evil. And some people crave money, have wandered from true faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Here is Paul telling Timothy about money. And he's saying, not that money is the root of all the evils. The love of money is the root of all evils. 
When money becomes your God, when becoming rich and having things become your God, it becomes evil. But money is a good thing because with money, you can help people that are in need. Anybody of you guys love to help people that are in need? If you see somebody hungry, you want to help them. But without money, you can't do that. Money, it's a powerful tool that God uses to expand his kingdom. But when we love money more than we love God, it becomes the root of all kinds of evil in our life. Now, maybe you're a middle schooler. Maybe you're a high schooler. You don't have a job. And you're probably like me thinking, how this, this 10 cents that I got from my mom's dollar is going to make any kind of difference in the kingdom of God. And you're like, you know, I don't have a lot. And this is, this is, this is something that a lot of people say, is that my giving doesn't really count because I don't have a lot, because I don't have much. Have you ever been there before? Where you want to help, but you, don't have, you, you look at what you have, and you're like, this is going to make no difference. And I remember when my mom used to say, hey, remember the 10 cents out of that dollar belongs to the Lord. I always was like, uh, uh, you know how embarrassing is it going to be when I fill my envelope and there's five dimes in there? People are going to laugh. Because I always thought that the amount, it's what matters. But it's not the amount, it's the obedience. It's the sacrifice that we're making. Jesus dealt with this. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, Jesus is at the temple. Now, the temple was the place of worship, where people came to worship, kind of like a church, came to worship God, came and brought offerings to God. And Jesus is, I'm assuming he's just reclining somewhere or seating somewhere. And he says this, Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. And remember, I need your help, so follow with me. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds drop in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped only two big coins and dropped two gold coins. What does it say? It dropped two small coins. And listen to the response of Jesus. Because we got people here that are giving large amounts of money. And we got this poor widow. Now, when it says poor widow, it's not like, oh, she little cute, poor widow. No, it was literally, she was poor. She had nothing. She had nothing. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a, ti a tiny part of their... That's not what it sounded in my head. I'm glad I didn't say it. <laughs> Sawyer is not here to help me with my words. But she, poor as she is, has given some things, has given everything she had to live on. Here we got people, religious people, that had a lot and gave large amounts of money. It did not move God. It did not move Jesus. But then this poor widow came and gave two small coins that literally, when I was doing research on how much money was that, it was so little that it was like a fraction of what it would be like a cent. It was nothing. But it was everything that she had. What moved Jesus into bringing his disciples in wasn't the large amount. It was the obedience of that widow. Because I know that sometimes like that widow, that's how we feel. Well, I don't have anything. I only have this little money that my parents give me. And if I give a tithe of this, it's just very little. It's not about the amount. It's about our obedience to God. To decide I'm going to honor God with what has been given to me. Now, let me tell you something. When we give to God, it's because he already gave us. So what we're doing is being faithful with what he gave us. We're giving him back just a tenth 
And that's what the tithe is. It's a tenth. Now, my sermon in a sentence, I want you to write this down. Simple. My tithe belongs to the Lord. My tithe belongs to the Lord. What is the tithe? Tithe is 10% of everything you make. So this means that out of this $1, 10 cents belong to the Lord. Out of $10, $1 belongs to the Lord. Out of $100, $10 belong to the Lord. Out of $1,000, $100 belong to the Lord. So how can you calculate your tithe? Well, if your parents give you $5, you're going to divide 5 by 10. It's going to be what? 50 cents, right? No, it's more. It's 50 cents. It is. That's it. You divide by 10. Or you can multiply times 0.10, but that is more complicated. It's a lot more things you have to click. Tithing, when you tithe, let me tell you and make this very clear. Because you tithe 10%, that does not make you a generous person. That makes you obedient to the word of God. A generous person is not a person who gives 10%. A generous person is somebody who gives above that. And that's what we call the tithe and offerings. The tithe is what we're required to do according to scripture, both Old Testament and New Testament. But giving offerings... Is going, be, going above and beyond. And when, we, when we're giving our tithe and we're giving offerings to God, what we're telling God is that, God, we trust you. I trust you with my money. When my wife and I were going through our pre-marriage counseling, our counselor said, the number one reason why divorces happen, it's because of money fights. Because people have not grabbed hold of their finances, and that brings a lot of tension in the home. And as believers, when we don't pay your tithe to God, what we're doing is we're stealing from God. So my question to you is like, are you being faithful with what God has given to you, or you've been hiding it from God? Because it's not about the amount, it's your obedience. When we tithe and when we give, we give to God first. We don't buy whatever we want to buy and then we say, oh yeah, I got, I, got, I got enough to tithe this week or this month. No, no, no. When you receive that money, the first thing you do is to put aside what belongs to God. And you honor Him. What you're saying is, God, I'll put you first. Because I believe you will continue to provide for me like you have up to this point. And when you do that, God will bless you. Now, we don't tithe so God will bless us. We tithe because he already blessed us. So if you're in sixth grade or ninth grade or twelfth grade, maybe you're a leader in here. My challenge to you is to honor God and worship God with your finances, with what belongs to him, and watch, the, watch God does the incredible things in your life and provide for you and bring scholarships and, 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 and from places that you never thought. That's what God does. He made the impossible possible, especially when somebody is trusting him and honoring him. So, I'll tell you the story about my mom. That she always said, remember from this dollar, 10 cents belonged to the Lord. My first job, I wasn't allowed to work while I was in high school. I had to learn English. So I was like in school when I was in school and in school when I was at home. Never worked until I graduated high school. And I worked at Whitewater Bay. Anybody been at Whitewater Bay? Season of 2010, maybe some of you were just being born. Some of you guys were babies, and some of you guys were swimming in my waters. 
I was deep girl of the year, by the way. I got a little, I can't remember what I got. I got something. But I remember one of my coaches was my, my manager. I used to play soccer, and he was the aquatics manager. And he says, hey, why don't you come work for me at, at Whitewater Bay? I said, of course. I got nothing else to do. I need money. Anybody needs money or wants money? Money's not evil. It's good. I do want money. So my first two weeks at Whitewater Bay, I worked 100 in 17 hours. Now, that is not legal. I'm pretty sure it's not legal. But I wanted to work. I was picking up everybody's shift. I was doing pool crew at 6.30 in the morning. I was just cleaning white water pools. And then at 10, I got my first shift. And then at 3 or 4, it was my second shift. I worked all day. Loved it. And I remember the first time I walked in into that little area that we had to check in, I mean clock in and clock out, and they hand me my first paycheck. I worked 112, 17 hours. I was making minimum wage, which was nothing, but when you work 117 hours, that's a lot of money. Listen, I was so excited to open my check. I opened my check, and it was like 670 something dollars. I was like, Man, taxes took all my money. It was so sad. And remember, I was, but I was still happy. It was the first time I had $600 in my hands. It was a piece of paper. I didn't know how to cash it yet. And I remember I'm looking at the check, and I'm walking towards my car. And all I could remember was my mom's voice saying, remember that out of each dollar, 10 cents belong to the Lord. And for me... It was easy to tithe and honor God even when I had $672 because I've been practicing that even with dimes. My challenge to you is that you honor God with your finances. Starting tonight, Tonight's going to be different. We're going to do it in the small groups. We're going to hand every leader an envelope. And you will have an opportunity to do your tithe, to do your offering. But starting next week, during the experience, we're going to be worshiping God with our finances. Every week you will have an opportunity to bring God your best offering. And let me tell you something. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your money. What you need is to learn how to honor him with your finances. He doesn't need your money. He's the creator of everything. You think he needs your money? He didn't need my 50 cents, my five dimes. But I needed to learn that discipline so he could continue to pour over more blessings and more finances into my life. Starting next week, we're going to be have, giving you an opportunity to honor God with your tithe and your offerings. And I want to challenge you. If you have a job to do the math and pay your tithe and honor God and go above and beyond, even if that means that you only put $1 in that envelope. On those chairs where you're in every single week, they're filled with a lot of things. In there, there is an envelope for your tithe and your offerings. And I want you to grab those and write your name and write how much you're giving and put it in there and bring it into the bucket. Why am I teaching you about money when you have no job? Because I want you to live a blessed life. But more than anything, I want you to live a life that honors God with everything that he has already given you. Will you stand to your feet with me? Maybe you are here tonight Everybody, stand up. I see some of you guys sitting. Maybe you're here tonight and you have never given your tithe and your offerings to God. And tonight you say, Pastor Christian, starting tonight, I want to learn how to honor God with my finances. If that person is you, would you raise your hand? Because I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. If you will say today, you know what? I want to start honoring God with my finances and I want to start giving 
my tithe and give it uh, my offering. If that person is you, would you raise your hand? This is why I'm asking you to raise your hand. It's not to embarrass you. This is me. I need to do better at everything like this too. But I'm saying this because the moment that you decide to obey and honor God, the enemy will come after you. And I want to make sure that we're covered in prayer. So if you want to honor God and learn how to do that, I want you to raise your hand. Keep your hand up high. Every eye closed. Nobody looking around. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for loving us so much that you gave everything you had, your son, to die on a cross for us. And you die a brutal death for our forgiveness. And now we have freedom. Father, as North students, we want to honor you with our tithe and with our offerings. We want to do what the Bible says when it comes to money. But help us, Father, when the enemy comes and feeds us lies that what we're giving or what we're doing does not make any difference, Lord. Well, I pray that the Holy Spirit filled us, Father. Lord, and I pray that as we give and continue to give, that you continue to build your kingdom. Because we know that every time we give, somebody gets saved. Because the gospel has been preached here in Oklahoma City and around the world. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say. Everybody say.